welcome along to Watercolour Wednesday. I'm just checking my microphone's working before we get started. Excellent, there you all are. Lovely to have you along again for Watercolour Wednesday. Let me grab my coffee. Definitely need my coffee beside me today. Um, as we're going to paint this really pretty little blue tit. I love these birds and I've painted them several times before. But this photo just drew me in. There's quite a lot of detail in the photo. It's nice and clear. Um, so hopefully you have all sketched out your blue tits ready to start. And I'm going to be using my primary colours again today. So um, where am I? <laughs> hands are yellow phalo blue quinacridone magenta a little bit of friends gray and when we do the branch um if you've got some burnt sienna burnt sienna will be useful to have too so very simple colorways and for the background similar to when we did the canaries some time ago i'm just going to go for this loose kind of watery background color behind our little bird okay so that's the paints brushes my size 12 and size 6 i'm using the ones from the bundle that i spoke about last week they're really really good so if you haven't ordered the bundle check it out on my website once you finish painting today that will be great so i'm going to make myself disappear from the screen she says there we go um so you can just focus on the main subject of the day let me get everything in position so we're going to start down on his breast and the picture will stay on the screen for you if you've managed to print off the reference picture that's always good to have it close by i'm going to pop it under there so it doesn't blow away when I use the hairdryer. So have your hairdryer ready too. And we're going to start a nice slow pace today. It's very hot. We're all feeling a bit jaded, I think. So we're just not used to the heat over here, are we? So when it comes along, it takes us by surprise. So I'm going to start with my yellow. So hands are yellow or lemon yellow would be good too, if you haven't got hands are yellow. I'm just adding some water to the paint on my plate getting it a nice runny consistency kind of like tea or cordial and we're going to go straight in to his chest okay so I'm going to start there's a bit of yellow coming in up here at the top by his face so just on the very tip of my brush just coming around the tip of the, the wing and then coming down into his belly now we're not going to do a whole load of detail in our bird and we're working to start with wet onto dry paper a bit more water on my brush and just coming around his belly down to his leg and off to his bottom he's got this little fluffy bit of um feather going on here near his towel i'm going to leave that mostly white and i don't mind having some patches of white amongst the yellow so there's a few specks that i've left the white of the paper showing through so that's our base layer in place nice and light not too strong not too rich in color and now i want to mix up a shadow color for his belly it's a kind of strange one to mix it's a shadow yellow Okay, so to create a shadow for yellow, you want to go opposite on the colour wheel. And the opposite of yellow is purple. So let's see what happens. I'm going to take a little bit of blue. And clean my brush out. A little bit of quinacridone magenta to make a purple. A little bit more magenta. I'm going to take that colour a bit creamier than the first yellow that we put down. So less water, more paint. 
a bit more red in there there we go touch more so we've got this nice bluey purple color more on the blue side than the red and then I'm going to take a little bit of yellow into that tiny bit of yellow you'll see it go kind of browny gray and that's where I want to be touch more red in there lovely and then I'm going to take this gray purple wet onto wet into the yellow now that's a nice shadow color I hope you agree for the yellow coming under that fluffy bit of feather near his towel and just using my brush to put it down and pull the paint where I want it so it's this shadow that's being cast by his wing as the sunlight's coming and hitting him from this angle and causing a shadow over this back end of him so I'm just popping a little bit of that wet onto wet into the yellow to add some shadows and then I'm going to go with my yellow again clean that brush out into my yellow a bit thicker this time more like a single cream consistency and I'm going to go in again and add some stronger yellows where I want them I'm just touching in with that wet paint on my brush a bit of a pop a bit of a zing of a stronger yellow down that bottom bit there by his bottom and coming along the edge of his wing again and just let this new stronger yellow melt in to the work that you've already done with our base layer so getting a nice speckledy look I'm going to add a bit more yellow now I'm looking at him he looks a bit more orangey yellow in places don't you think so I'm going to bring a little tiny speck of magenta into my yellow puddle to make him a bit more orangey yellow, more eggy yellow and I'm going to pop that in. Wet, a bit too much magenta there. In we go. Give him a bit of a warmer hue. Bringing it in through the purple in places as well. Just let it mix on the paper so we're getting multiple colours. And you notice I've still got this really light patch here that I want to maintain from the white of the paper. Just a couple of flecks of white in there. And on this little fluffy wing, these little feathers that are popping up at the side here. He's looking cute already. Yeah, it needed that little touch of red to the yellow just tidying up along his feathery edge with the tip of my brush fabulous I think I want that shadow a little bit darker so I'm going to go back to my purpley grey and just touch in along the edge of the wing literally just tapping down and letting that little puddle of purple kind of sit on the surface just where I want those darker shadows to be and a touch more at the back of his leg whilst we have this lovely purpley grey colour I want you to take it down his leg as well so we're going to come down that leg which goes right up into his body on the tip of your brush pull down to his little foot foot down to his ankle and then what I'm going to do we can't see the whole of his foot in the reference picture so I'm just going to come around the bottom of his talon there where I can see the shadow that his body 
is casting on his foot down the back down the underside of those talons and a tiny little line between his toes now because i've but bought that gray color down the left hand side of his leg it should leave a highlight on the right hand side but i'd like his leg a little bit darker so i'm going to go into my friend's gray now if you haven't got friend's gray you can mix your friend's gray with either all three primaries together or just burnt sienna and your blue okay let's just do that burnt sienna and blue and you'll make a lovely dark gray kind of an even my burnt sienna is dried up it's so warm in here and you'll get that lovely dark gray a bit more brown a bit more brown and you'll get that lovely rich gray from just those two colors so I'm going to go in whilst his leg is still damp right on the very tip of my brush I'm still using my size 12 brush but you can of course move down a size let me put my glasses on that might help coming down that left hand edge to darken and then into the shadow on his ankle I'm just going to tap it in tap 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 a couple of little dots of stronger color into his foot and again under his claws and a little bit more going up into his body and where his leg meets the body just let that color blend together I've got a little bit of a patch there I'm going to add a touch more yellow where his belly meets his leg tiny bit more yellow there so the leg kind of melts which is what you want it to do you don't want his leg to look like something that's stuck onto the body you want it to melt into the yellows up here I'm going to take my size 6 brush now with just water on and I'm going to come down the right hand edge of his leg tiny bit of water coming down just touching into the dark grey on the left just allowing that dark grey somewhere to blend into sorry my phone just went off and now there's someone at the door one second this happens every week without foul Hello, thank you. So sorry, guys. The postman. Excellent. So we've got that blended leg going into the body. We've got our lovely mix of yellows and greys in the undercarriage of our little bird so what we're going to do next is we're going to go up to his head we don't want to start putting color on his wing yet or his towel until his belly's had time to dry back okay so back to my size 12 brush let's mix up some color for the head of our bird so I'm going to take my phalo blue onto the plate again you always start off with a nice light color so add more water into one side of your puddle so it's creamy there and I can pull a bit of color into the water over on one side so I keep my strong colour and then have some weak colour to play with. Let me just move this over a little bit so you can see my plate better. I'm going to lift that up because I've got light shining. Okay, and then into the top of his head we go. 
just taken a little bit of that washed out blue across the plumage on the top of his head. I'm on the very tip of my brush and I want the feathers to be, I don't want a straight line along here because that's not how they are. It's a kind of broken line. So just using the tip of my brush to pop that nice, very light, very watered down blue onto the top of his head. Now I've got quite a bit of water there, so I'm just going to suck some of that up using my brush, lifting out. I could see that was too wet. You don't want that too wet because when you add your darker colour on, it's going to run everywhere. So we want to control what happens and we control the next layer by having a nice dry brush and just using the water that's in on the plate. So I'm going really creamy now to control what happens. In we go on the very tip of the brush again and just playing around the edge of his head where it meets the white feathers. Just going along a little line there, playing with that brush, giving little flicks to give him a dark edge, which should very gently bleed into the lighter blue from our first wash. You can tip your board up as well to encourage it to sp spread a little bit. If it's doing nothing at all, then just nudge it with the edge of your brush to get it to blend where you want it to go. We've got that lovely pop of blue coming into our bird. We're going to make it stronger still by coming in with some purple. So into my lovely creamy phalo blue. I'm going to take some very creamy magenta to darken that blue further. It will change the blue to more of an ultramarine, really dark, almost purpley. Don't add so much red that it goes um, purple, just enough red so that you go to a kind of midnight blue. And then I'm going to go in again just coming along that edge of his head, tapping in some even darker blue. I'm going to dry my brush off. I'm going to zoom in a little bit with the camera for you. Bear with me one second. Whoops. I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. There we go, that's better. So up on his head, now I've got those three colours going on. I'm just going to use the very pointy tip of my brush to nudge again some of that darker blue up towards the lighter blue, just to help it blend together. And I've just noticed that comes out to a point at the edge of his head there. Lovely. So sweet. Okay, I'm just going to test how his belly's doing. And it's pretty much dry, but we'll give it a little bit longer. And what we're going to do next is this band. I can bring him back into shot. This band around his head. Let me just change screen again. You do have to bear with me today, guys. I have a really nasty headache going on. I think it's the heat. I need to drink more water, I think. There we go. So you can see where I'm pointing to. We're going to this band around the face. So again, starting with my bluey mixture here, nice and light, just to get that placement in and my brush is dry. Dry brush, just using the liquid on my plate. Coming down these markings, coming under the beak, and then flicking that colour towards the white. Just teasing it around, getting that broken, serrated edge again to the feathers. 
and coming up across this band towards his eye now this is where i want you to be really super careful not to go right into the eye we want to come around the edge on the tip of your brush round the outer perimeter into the feathers and over the other side so we're leaving this white ring around the eye just very carefully nudge that blue around until you get that circle going around the eye i'm going to zoom in a bit more again there we go Okay, so this blue, I've not gone straight for the darkest blue. I'm just using that mixture we had on the head, watered down, and they're coming out the other side of his eye. You can breathe again, relax as you come along that edge. Dry brush, just using the liquid that's in the paint, coming down to join his body. Then filling in the gaps. And pull in again on the tip of the brush to create that serrated edge as we join the white band glaze. Now, why we put this light colour on first is if you do make a mistake, you have a chance to lift it out and not leave too strong a mark. Okay, so if there was some that had gone where I didn't want it, I would take a bit of tissue and a wet brush, activate that paint and lift it out. Um, so I tend to go nice and light first. I'm just making that band near his nose a little bit wider. Too much water in there, I can see. Now, if you can see a puddle of water on your page, dry your brush and just soak some of that water up. And it's controlling the amount of water on your page that will help you have success with your watercolours. And now into, I'm going to go into Friends Grey now with a touch of blue. Nice and dark, midnight sky kind of blue we're looking for. A bit more grey in there, a bit more blue. really dark creamy paint again not too much water on your brush because we've already got water on our page and i'm just going to tap in this stronger darker color into the wet blue that we've already put down as our base literally just going on the tip of the brush tapping in kind of in the middle of this band and it will spread out all by itself because our paper's wet. Tip of the brush. Feather in that edge. As we go, making it nice and dark. Now I look back, his head is started to dry and I want to compare the strength of colour I've got here with the top of his head. And I want to bring that a bit darker. So I'm just going to go back in with this strong, dark midnight blue using the grey and the blue just to darken a couple of patches. And his top of his head has gone and dried on me already. So what I'm going to do, because if I leave that, it's going to dry with a strange pattern in his head. So I'm just going to bring with a little bit of water on my brush, soften the edge of that fresh paint so it bleeds into his head. Oh, I've got hiccups. Touch more dark, pulling that dark out towards the edge of his band where the end of the bird comes. Nice. And a few more creamy flicks, dry brush, a bit more of a serrated edge along the edge of those feathers. I do not want a crisp line there, solid line I mean. 
I want that broken so I'm just flicking in towards the white on the very hairs on the top of my brush to break up that white area. Okay, I'm going to switch now to my size 6 brush and some very creamy grey. So I'm pretty much using a little bit of water on the brush, picking up some of the grey and we're going to go into his eyeball. Oops, I've got a hair on the end of my brush. That's no good. Oops. Let me try that again. So, it's still there. I'm going to switch brush. I don't want to make a mess of his eyeball. Okay. Switching brushes. Damp brush. Just enough to pick up your paint. Full control. And we're going to come across the top arch of his eye. Leaving that white band around the edge of his eye. Coming down. A little bit more water on my brush. So it flows. Coming into the bottom of his eye. So we're going around that circle of his eye first. Tiny little strokes. Take your time. And then we've got a highlight in his eye. We don't want to lose that highlight. So I'm going to come in from the edge, tapping in, creeping across the eye to leave that highlight across the middle. There we go. And now I've got this creamy, creamy grey on my brush. I'm going to tighten up and bring shrink down the white band around the eye very very carefully coming around the eye it's easier to do it now and shrink that down make it smaller and smaller so you just have a thin line around the eyeball itself and we maintain the glint in his eye Whilst we're working with this dark grey, creamy grey, I want you to come into his beak and we're going to do the same. We're going to come under the beak with the grey, under the bottom side of his beak in shadow. I'm just blocking in the dark area of his beak there. There we go, nice and strong into the beak. We're not going to touch the top part of the beak right now. We're going to come back to that in a little while. I'll just pause for a moment for you to finish doing your eyes and pop a bit more of that darker blue in his band on his head. Remember, if you have any suggestions, any photos, maybe you're a keen photographer as well, you have some pictures you'd like to turn into paintings, drop me a line, let me know, send me the pictures, and we'll uh, do our best to accommodate them into a class. There are some really good sites, reference um, photos for artists. Um, I'll drop a link onto Kofi for the ones that I use where local artists um, share their photography for people to paint. So there's no license, you can just go ahead and create your artwork without any fear. Okay guys, I've had my little break. <laughs> We're gonna come into the, uh, the biggest part of the painting the wing and his towel. Now, I see 
in my little bird. Now, when I've painted them, them before, they've had a bit of green in the back, but this one's more violety blue to my eye. So, let's mix up a colour that we're happy with. For the underpainting, so I'm going to take my phthalo blue, nice and watery again to start with and into that to get that purpley look I'm going to add a little bit of magenta tiny bit at a time until it switches from phalo blue to ultramarine blue and then keep going a little bit more until you get a very soft lilac-y purpley blue keep adding there we go that looks about right to me now there's areas that we're going to use a darker stronger blue and areas that we're going to use this purpley washed out blue so nice and watery i don't want your color to go on too thick and we're going to come along the edge of his head i'm going to water that down a little bit more and just pull in that color around the shoulders, starting at the shoulders of our blue tit and coming down his back towards these feathers here. Stop there. We're focusing on his shoulders to start with. Pulling that colour round, nice and neat against the yellow. Down to about there. Okay, so we've got that lovely soft, can you see that very gentle purpley hue to the colour? Now, the reason I've asked you to stop there is in the area of his wings and wing feathers, we can see a lot of light. So I want you to dry your brush off, dry it off on your tissue. Pick up a bit of this purpley colour just on the tip of your brush and we're going to do some dry brushing. As I say, I'm not interested in the detail, but I'm going to touch down with the tip of my dry brush, just a little bit of paint on the tip, and I'm going to flick down these feathers, a little bit of paint, and drag that dry brush so you get some texture of the paper coming through, and we're not just solidly painting. Nice and dry. Can you see that texture? coming through there, keeping some highlights towards the left hand side of his feathers. So we're not doing detail, but we want to get that effect and the light, how the light's hitting his feathers. So again, dry brush, just a little bit of paint on the tip, coming in and flicking and kind of dragging your brush across the feathers so it skips on the paper and gives a broken pattern and you see white of the paper showing through. Fabulous. I'm going to come and do the same thing coming this way from his wing, pulling off from right to left across his body. To pick up these feathers at the side. Dry brushing. I love dry brushing. Should do more dry brushing. Okay. I'm loving these colours. He looks just right to me. Okay, before he dries too much, I'm trying to give you time if you're painting along live to keep up. But here on his wing, I want to add some more blue, but phalo blue this time. So I'm touching in into the damp paint. Nice wet puddle of paint. Nice wet brush. Because now I want the fresh paint to soak in to the colours underneath. Just adding some stronger colours over on the left hand side. I'm going to pull that wing down a little bit lower. And then just touch in and lift off that brush to deposit nice, strong phalo blue in that right hand side of his wing.
Wonderful. I've got another trick up my sleeve. Dry your brush again. Pick up a little bit of phalo blue. And on this part of his upper body, I'm just going to do a bit more dry brushing. Tiny, tiny bit of paint on a dry brush. Oops, my brush is too wet. Try again. And just flick in. His body's still a bit damp, so this colour is going to bleed in. It's just giving me some lovely patterns here in the alternative blue. Okay, so on to the wing that's tucked under the wing that's folded over. So we've got this wing here from the other side that's folded across his body. And then we've got these lines coming out from under his shoulder here for the other wing. So again, working with creamy paint and a dry brush. Creamy paint, dry brush. Dry that brush off, pick up a bit of paint. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come this time. I want you to come up onto the tip of your brush and stroke it really quickly across our bird, leaving some white lines in between those strokes. A very quick dry brush, touch down on the tip and drag. Try and keep your lines parallel across our bird just coming up a little bit higher on his shoulder and I'm going to repeat that again taking an even stronger phalo blue I'm going to go again tip of the brush dry dry brush pull in from under the wing some stronger lines Really creamy paint, nice and you want it as strong as you can get it. Coming in to create those stripes, those parallel lines on his wing. We're going to leave that to settle in for a little while. And we're going to go down to his towel, doing exactly the same again. I'm going to start with the colour we used up on his back, so that kind of purpley blue. Dry brush, dry it off, pick up some paint. It's all about the direction now. I'm going to turn my bird round and I'm going to flick dry brush down his towel feathers. Let's move everything out my way. Just a little bit of paint on your brush, starting under the wing, coming down, dry brush, dry brush. Pick up the texture of the paper. If you can see the bobbles from your cold pressed watercolour paper, then you have it right. Okay, we're going to go into our phalo blue next. This is still kind of tea consistency. Dry my brush off and I'm going to go again with the phalo blue. Touch down and flick, touch down and flick. We'll add a little bit more detail, not too much, just a bit as we go. So we've got two different colour blues happening in his little towel feathers. Okay, we're going to go back in now with a little bit, just a little bit of more detail. So I'm going to go into my phalo blue, really strong, really creamy not too much water on the brush and I'm going to mix in some grey get in that dark colour like we did around the band of his head 
if you haven't got the grey just take some turn purple use your um, red yellow and, and uh, magenta to make your grey but you want to go really strong and creamy and I'm just going to add a few details a few quick brush marks around the edge of his wing there another one just there coming under the feathers at the side here on the very tip of my brush just creating a bit more interest come up the side of these feathers here you can just about still see some of my drawing underneath I'm just making some quick marks down that side under the wing the mark I've made here is a little bit big this one here in the middle so I'm just going to put some sweep across with my watery brush and then just lift some of that out and go again I want a smaller mark there there we go and this looks nice but it's a little bit harsh so I'm going to take a wet brush not too much water and just come on the other side of where you've put these marks with a bit of water softening and allowing a little bit of that strong paint to bleed out we're just giving it somewhere to soften into the same up the side of my bird I'm just going to come with a clean brush next to those strong marks with a touch of water not too much just so they soften away and under the bottom here or oh, actually these ones I'm going to leave strong because those are shadows there's a bit I've missed down here but from that strong paint with a clean brush I'm going to go in to that paint and I'm going to bring some of the lines between the feathers up. Just pop another shadow here. And just come up the feather. To go into that creamy dark colour that you've put down. And create some of the feather shapes. Just picking up some paint that's already on the board. Don't go too far. I don't want you to get too much into detail another one just here at the side fabulous I want this colour in this central section to be a bit stronger so I'm going to take some diluted phalo blue from here just on the top part where we added those lines and just take a thin wash of colour over there just to make that contrast between this colour and this colour a bit stronger as we come into those lines. Really gently, don't disturb the paint underneath. And then just another couple of darker lines running through his wing again. You're doing really well guys, thank you for joining me live, it does make a difference. I'm just going to add a bit more of a um, flick of magenta to the edge of his wing here. So these feathers that are folded over his body, I've picked up the tiniest bit of magenta on a dry brush. I'm just going to flick through the ends of some of those feathers. Tiny, tiny bit, tiny bit of magenta on a dry brush, dry brushing again up his body. Just that hint of pink coming through the wing feathers that are folded across his body. Be careful not to overwork this area. It's really easy to get carried away and lose all the highlights. You could come back in with some white gouache or a white pencil pen, pencil, and I'll show you that actually. We've never used a white pencil pastel with our watercolour. So I'll show you if you need to add a bit more white or you feel it could do with a bit more white, how to do that. 
And then we're going to go down to his towel feathers with our stronger blue with a little bit of red in it just to take it to kind of ultramarine blue colour. And then I'm going to come down his towel feathers bringing in a little bit of detail along the edge of that feather. Curling round, coming into that one and then under the edge of these feathers creating the layers creamy paint again adding some shadow under the first layer of feathers and then another layer of feathers behind just a touch of detail down there dry brush again I'm picking up a little bit of blue and a little bit of grey on my brush so I'm literally hopping from the blue to the grey so it's nice and creamy I'm just going to bring that line through his feather on the tip of my brush coming down oh that went wrong didn't it it's good when it goes wrong let's embrace things going wrong too fat so I'm going to go back in wet it and lift it out and I'm going to try again far too fat Eunice so I'm going to go to my thinner brush this time blue grey blue grey try again on the tip of the brush add in a bit of detail strengthening those shadows under the towel feathers without going too much detail <laughs> that's better so now I've done that along this edge of his towel that line's too harsh I want it to melt melt into the rest of his towel so I'm just going to introduce some water along the edge again softening that line giving it somewhere to bleed into soften 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 Strengthen it again. Just going back into my shadows under the feather. Making them a bit stronger. There we go. You don't want to go into too much detail because you can lose the freshness of your painting. Isn't he looking dandy? Okay. We're just going to make a few adjustments now. We're going to go back in to his yellow. Now he's had time to dry. I'm going to take another wash of yellow. I really have hiccups, guys. It's terrible. I'm trying to swallow them. <laughs> I'm going to take a bit more yellow in his underbelly. A touch of magenta in my yellow to make it a bit more orangey. I'm going to add a bit stronger colour under his belly under his towel I just felt it could do with stronger orangey yellow there a bit more magenta just touching in and a touch there and as always if I put fresh colour down I'll bring some water along the edge just a little bit and then to really make him pop out the thing that's missing is a strong shadow under his wing. So with very creamy grey, now if you're mixing this yourself, go straight from your blue to your burnt sienna with your brush. Blue, brown, blue, brown, blue, brown, end on the blue. Test it out on a scrap of paper if you're not sure of the colour. And then I'm going to come along the edge of his wing for some shadows. A little bit there, nice and creamy right on the tip of my brush coming under his wing all the way down to create that shadow cast against his body and then with a little bit of water just in one spot this spot here towards the left hand side of his wing 
I shall add a bit of water to blend that down into the shadow. A little bit of water under so it can bleed down into his body. Touch more grey again along that line. I want this shadow really strong. Okay, this bit here is run a little bit, so I'm just going to lift, tap it out with a bit of tissue just to soak some of that grey up. And I want another bit of shadow. I'm looking for shadows now. I'm going to add a bit of shadow under that wing fluffy bit there where his bottom is covered by his towel feathers. A bit more of a shadow just under this left hand side. And a few more little tufts across, just creating a feathery look. So under here, in this lovely grey colour that we mixed up, that was with our blue, bit of magenta and a touch of yellow. Just mix some up again if you've run out. Magenta, there we go. That shadow colour, just come in under here to add a bit of texture, just a tiny little bit of detail just using the length of your brush and touching in a couple of stronger shadows near his leg oh my headache's not going away i'm gonna to have to go home and lay down in a cool room with an ice pack i think Okay, into his face now. So we've left all this white area in his face and it's just jumping off the page. It looks unnatural. We want to add a hint of colour in there and we're going to do that. I'm going to clean my palette. So that gives you a little bit of time whilst I clean all these colours off my plate. And we're going to mix that lovely lavender colour up again with our blue and our magenta. nice purpley lavender colour you're looking for like we used on his shoulder really watered down and I'm just going to come and add a bit of shadow to his face into the white area a little bit a hint of colour around the edge here where his beak comes in just sculpt in his face and again Coming across his middle section, across his eyebrow, down the side of his nose. Be careful not to reactivate the colour underneath. Kind of want a little bit more pink in there. I'm going to add a touch of magenta. And just nudge it around that hint of colour across his face. Taking the brightness out of that white area and that little hint of colour. And the same colour again, we're going to come down the top of his beak. Okay, a little bit of colour on the top half of his beak. There's just a little bit I see I've gone wrong on his head that I want to alter. I'm just changing the shape slightly here because I've spotted it and it's annoying me. So I'm just having a faff around to get that shape better bringing that blue from his head a bit lower that's all I'm doing because the gap here between his eye and his head is too wide on mine so I'm just adding a bit of that dark dark blue just to narrow that white band down a little bit because it was annoying me okay I'm just gonna go and grab a pastel pencil a second just to 
show you another new... I like to introduce new things to you. So, pastel pencil. If you want to bring a highlight to the edge of some of these feathers here, you can just come in with a white pastel pencil. Make sure your paint's dry first. And just bring a bit of highlight back in. Or you could use white ink or gouache. My paint's still a little bit wet there. Um, so I've now blended my white pastel in with the blue. But never mind, you get the idea. And you can come in with a pastel pencil over the top and just add those couple of highlights. Okay, so we've just got the branch to do and a little bit of a hint of a background, as I say, a bit like we did with the budgery guards some weeks ago now. So into the wood, I want all the detail to be about the bird, so I'm not going to put lots of detail in the branch. I'm going to take some burnt sienna. Really light, lots of water. I'm going to start coming down the bottom of the branch. my burnt sienna just dancing that brush around lifting it between my strokes to create some texture just dance that brush around let's have a little play a little dance like you've got a bit of a tremor in your hand add in some texture by doing so because to show texture you want to show dark and light to show that a surface is rough Okay, and then I'm going to go darker, darker with my burnt sienna, creamier, add in a little bit of blue to make a grey brown, tiny bit of blue, there we go, get in a more dark brown and then I'm adding this shadow that you can see in the photo that the bird's casting on along the tail there. And then I'm just going to bounce again, dance around the page with this darker, creamier brown, stronger colour, more pigment. Dance it around, leaving light spots for the texture. Getting the roughness of the bark coming under his little foot there because that's going to be in shadow too. Nice. See, I don't want to go into too much detail. I'm going to add a little bit more burnt sienna up here. Dry brushing, just like we did in the bird. Up here, dry brushing. I'm going to dry brush and I'm going to take my dry brush marks with the burnt sienna, pure burnt sienna, across the branch just a few touches of warmer burnt sienna colour in there wonderful and finally a bit of grey along the underside of the branch to really darken underneath of it And we have our branch. A couple of spots are stronger. I'm going to play around with this for a little while. Playing with my browns, making it a bit darker again. Just dropping some stronger colour where I want it. Touching down and lifting up. Getting that shadow under his towel nice and strong. As the bird himself is cast in the shadow on the wood. Okay, I'm going to stop fiddling. <laughs> now you can absolutely leave this picture at that stage. Now the reason he's only got one leg is his other leg is over here. 
So I'm just coming under his tail with a touch of yellow there to indicate where his other leg is hiding behind his towel. And now to finish off, I want to use the colours that I've used within my bird to make the, a greeny colour for the background. So clean water to start. Make sure your bird is dry. And I'm going to come across behind him with clean water. Just take it away. I'm going to come down to the edge of the branch. Okay. And I'm going to go straight in with my hands of yellow. Coming behind his head. And working that colour out and down towards the branch. And just let it fade away. It's quite nice with the yellow. And then the other side, I'm going to come in next to his belly water now i've just painted a band of yellow there and then added the water so you can do it that way too or you can add your water first and then i'm just going to add more water to take it out to the edge of my paper i quite like that yellow now i don't know what to do um no i'm going to do green <laughs> so i'm going to take a little bit of diluted phthalo blue into the yellow and just I'm not mixing it that's why I didn't mix the green I want this phthalo blue to just blend in with that yellow and create various shades of green amongst this kind of flash of color behind our bird I think that finishes them off lovely a little bit down to the log just to the branch has an edge to it you know what I mean you know what I mean I'm gonna take him a bit darker here looking up at the screen kind of helps me to see that I need this green a bit stronger where his belly's darker so he pops out so a bit more yellow again and then some phalo blue over the top Deposit that stronger green next to his belly and then let it dance out. Let that brush dance away. I'm going to go a bit stronger again. A bit more blue. I'm not mixing the green first. And then just dance that away. Wet into wet. A nice puddle of colour. in some water to fade it off down to the bottom that's better isn't it his belly is jumping out a bit more I think playing around sit back look at what you've achieved See if that background colour needs to go darker. I'm just adding a little bit at a time, sitting back, looking at it and seeing when I think I've got the balance right. And just because he's got a nice white face round here, I'm going to add a bit more colour. And against that white flash that you can just see the other side of his um, beak. Just a hint of colour up there and I'm gonna call our little Kingfisher complete Kingfisher did I just say Kingfisher silly me <laughs> let me come back to screen guys just for a second you can see my oh not that one face you can see my bottom <laughs> so there we go a pretty little blue tit complete. I hope you've had fun painting this one along with me. And I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at one. Take care. Enjoy the weather. Keep painting. Bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye.